for Deepika Kumari to add to her collection. She, of course, comes from a family where her mother is a nurse, her father a rickshaw driver. They didn't think they had the means to support her in archery, but now they're glad they're on board with it <laughs> as Deepika has become one of the top archers in the world. All right, now we head on to our gold medal match in the mixed team competition, China taking on the USA. China ranked number two, the USA ranked number one. And let's first introduce you to the two archers from China who defeated Puerto Rico, the Russian Federation, and Mexico to reach this gold medal match. Dai Zhao Zhang, a very experienced archer on the international scene, and Zhu Jing, his partner here today, competing against the United States. And speaking of experience, Katuna Lorik and Brady Ellison, between the two of those, they've got about, oh, what? Seven almost 50 years, years 60 seven years. years. Uh, seven Olympics, sorry, I yeah. should say, yeah. So, and, and it's gonna be interesting to see how these, these two shoot on this field of play, because I believe they've got the highest bow weights out of anybody in their categories. So there's Katuna Lorig of the United States, 39 years young, ranked sixth in the world, already has a mixed team gold medal with Brady at stage one in Shanghai, going for the second gold medal of the season here today. And Brady Ellison, ranked number two in the world, has only one World Cup medal so far this season. And of course, that was the one he won with Katuna in Shanghai back in May. Yeah, Brady Ellison has been struggling a little bit this year. He uh, hasn't done the... Uh, amazing feats that he's done before where he just go, goes to World Cups and takes home all the gold medals. But um, it'll be interesting to see how, uh, how he comes away from this. And he's already won a bronze medal earlier this morning. And um, any wind on this field seems to not affect him. And it shouldn't because his bow is 57 pounds. I talked to him about that. And he says that that's just where he's shooting the best right now. Dai Zhao Zhang of China a bronze medalist at the Olympics in London. And this is Zhu Jing, 29th in the world. No World Cup medal so far this year until today. When she got the silver medal this morning in the women's team competition. Now here's Brady Ellison, one year after the Olympics. And he was strong this morning. Strong, consistent. Mm -hmm kind of heartbreaking when he was shooting against us. <laughs> you got an up close look at it. Yes, I did. And Katuna, it's surprisingly high. Well, both women started high. They both started at the approximate same spot. Um, Ms. Zhu from China had a seven up at 11 o'clock and Katuna starts with a six at 11 o'clock. So it's kind of interesting to see. Sure. <laughs> Mr. Dai with a direct hit. I believe Katuna Lorig is shooting about 47, 48 pounds. So that's pretty high for a woman. Um, but she seems to handle it with ease and not make it look hard at all. Zhu Jing on the uh, Chinese team that took a silver medal home from London. So all things considered, solid shooting for China here in the first end of the gold medal match in the mixed team competition. Yes. 10 points, and now that Brady's dialed in, I'm fairly certain he's not gonna be leaving that 10 ring. Wrong shot, Katuna. Not very often, at least going by his track record. And Katuna with an eight. Another high arrow. It's really interesting to see. And it's uh, really uncharacteristic of Katuna just to have two arrows that high and not be able to uh, make the adjustment after the first arrow. So I'm pretty sure she's done the adjustment now. And her next arrow, I'm moving the bet, will be in the, in the gold. You were talking about Brady just a moment ago. It is one year out for the Olympics. There's three more years to go to Rio. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a little bit difficult to stay at that high level all the time, don't you think? Well, it is difficult to stay there all the time, but with the way you work it when you're a high performance athlete, you time your peaks. So you have to have times where your shooting is phenomenal and, uh, it, and you're untouchable. But then other times between tournaments, you have to be able to come down off of those highs 
and have a little bit of a downtime, a little low time, so that you can work back up to your peak again. So if you do it properly, you can time it with all of the World Cups and the World Championships we have later on this year in Turkey. So I'm willing to bet that that's what Brady has done. Um, again, he hasn't had that much uh, luck earlier this year, but um, I know for a fact he's working on it and he's gonna make it work. Made it work this morning, picking up the bronze medal in the men's team competition. And so far, shooting well. And continues to shoot well here in the mixed team gold medal match. You see the wind is picking up on the field of play. But Katuna is a very strong woman, and I'm pretty sure this is going to be in the middle. Five Olympic Games with three different countries, all sorts of experience. I take my words back. She was at good height on the target, just straight left, which is the way the wind is going right now, and it is definitely picking up on the field of play. And at times it is playing havoc with these shots. As we can see here from Team China, it's uh, again off to the left. And um, Miss Zhu needs a nine just to take the lead by one point here. A little bit of a shaky shot and it's an eight. So they are tied after the first six arrows. Right back where we started at the beginning of the match, Zhu Jing with a score of eight. And it's back to Brady Ellison now, the United States, who helped lead the USA to a silver team medal in London Good job, Brady. last summer. And Brady with a pair of bullseyes in this end. So I'm pretty sure he's dialed in. And with 57 pounds in this wind, he's not going to be leaving the middle of the target anytime soon. Yes. 10 points. Katina Lorig joining him. They're in the center ring. So China needs a pair of tens just to tie. Dai Zhao Zhang hoping to keep pace, but that's an eight on the line. Probably will be Probably counted as a, a nine. nine, yeah. yeah. Our spotters are in a position where it's a little difficult to see arrows on the right-hand side of the target, but uh, definitely that arrow is a nine. And that's definitely a seven. So USA taking a five point lead after two ends in this gold medal match. And uh, again, Brady and Katuna showing us how strong they are. We can see the flags on the right hand side of the screen blowing. And that's the little archway that we're talking about, that wind tunnel that is blowing across this field and making all of these uh, conditions really difficult for archers. And you can see the wind has just stopped. And now it looks like it's kind of changing direction and swirling around, but it will start up again. And that's what archers are struggling with on this field of play. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not, but either way, execute a great shot and the arrow is gonna be in the middle. Good look at Brady Ellison of the United States. As we mentioned, member of that silver medal team for the US in London. They upset Korea in the semifinals before losing the gold medal by just one point to Italy. But it was the first Olympic medal for the US men since the year 2000. And there's one of his teammates, Jacob Wookie. Looking on from the grandstands as Dai Zhao Zhang straddles the shooting line. Nine off to the right, and we can see the wind has calmed down just a little bit, so that might just be where his corrected uh, shot uh, is going without any wind. So if there was wind, he probably would have shot a 10. A good shot again. Two strong shots for China. So a good start to the third end. China down by four after they changed the score. It's a four point lead for the USA heading into end number three. Strong <laughs> shot again by Brady. He's only dropped one point this whole round so far. Nice strong shot. Tuna needs a five to lead in this match. 
And it was actually Brady's first shot of the match. That was a nine. Mm -hmm. Everything kind of since his, then has been in the ten ring. Kind of his sighting arrow. <laughs> just warming up. Exactly. Yeah. You know, no big deal. It's just Brady Ellison shooting tens all day long. Yeah, just stretching out, warming up. Wow. Guy Zha Zhang fighting back. Good result for a uh, weak looking shot, but still it's a 10 on paper and it doesn't say 10 with a little bit of an English thrown on your bow arm. Mr. Dai, the silver medalist in Istanbul two years ago at the World Cup final and Zhu Jing starting to pick up her game too. And the wind is definitely picking up on the field of play. You can see how windy it is with those flags behind Brady and even his hair. So he's just taking his time and making sure that he gets this all lined up properly. Nine points. Only giving Katuna about 15 seconds to get this next shot off. But that is the job of the person who goes last, is to be able to speed up the shot and still perform accurately. There's a little bit of a wiggle in her bow. Uh, Not happy at all shot. with that shot. And, and that a is miss. a no score. It's a missed shot. And that could turn this whole match around. But we've seen that on more than one occasion this weekend. It happened twice yesterday. We saw a missed shot this morning. It's, uh, it's really unfortunate that that happened, but that's exactly what's going on on this field of play. And that's the uh, big story of the finals field in Medellin is the Massive amounts of wind at random times that just blow every archer around. And if you uh, can't that commit to that shot, like 110%. And there it is, there's the arrow. That's very unfortunate, but again, it's gonna be a little bit of work for Team USA to, to uh, come back, especially with a seven point deficit, but again, not impossible. So you never know, in this sport, it's unpredictable. Mm -hmm. The United States was leading by four points at the midway point of the match, but a missed shot. No score for Katuna Lorig on her final shot of the third end, and all of a sudden a reversal of fortune in China. In the driver's seat right now, leading at 104 to 97. Brady trying to get some of that back. Nice strong shot. And again, just because it happened to the USA does not mean it's not going to happen to China. It's very possible that China could miss an arrow as well. But right now, the USA only has a 10 point lead. Um, and China has two arrows to shoot to get it to an equal spot at where USA is right now. So. It's a difficult position that the U.S. is in. That's a very quick shot. That's very close to the line. Nine or good 10. result. Yeah, it's a very good result for how quick of a shot that was. Is that full draw for maybe half a second? Dai, who took home a team silver medal from stage one in Shanghai. Really shooting well now with the Zhujing. So the Chinese team really applying the pressure right now. And the lead is at nine. Brady needs a bullseye. Brady gets a bullseye. <laughs> I believe he only dropped three points this whole match. Three points out of eight arrows. That's pretty good in these conditions. Can't always get what you want, but he usually does. Katuna. And a very good finish for the match. Good job. You see she's... Uh, it's kind of bittersweet because of how she finished, but what she knows happened in that third end. A little bit of a catastrophe, but again, it's the way the ball bounces in this sport. So China simply needs to be solid and finish this out. And right now, three or better will do it. Anything in the black or better for China will win them the gold medal. Zhu Jing to try to wrap up the gold medal, which she does. It is over. And the match turns in the third end in China. 
which suffered from a missed shot this morning in the women's competition, the women's team competition. Now, ironically, a missed shot by the United States, and they benefit from a missed shot. Yeah. So it's it's been a really weird last couple of days seeing people like Rio Wild in the compound division missing, and Rio is known for always just hitting tens with every single shot. So shows how difficult these conditions are to shoot in on the field of play. So recapping the scoring, there it is. 140 to 134 is your final score. And it was that third end that did in the United States.